Now uh, we have like Ambrosio Maria Bernardelli uh, from the University of Korea that will uh, uh, talk to us about the stable elective surgery under uncertainty uh, and its uh, multi objective stochastic approach. So, thank you, thank you everyone for my presentation. Uh, I'll talk about um, say a challenge. Uh, Lorenzo Conocere, Vena Recesi, Dante Dumas, and I did for the uh, 14th of the optimization modeling competition about a scheduling problem uh, regarding the healthcare. So, uh, start with a quick overview of my presentation, so will be an introduction, a statement. Uh, we will see the mathematical models uh, of the problem, we will see some methodologies with which to solve them. Uh, and finally, some computational analysis, so uh, we'll the results and the conclusions. First of all, introduction, problem statement. Um, so it's a scheduling problem. We have a list of patients and a, a master surgical schedule that is uh, uh, some operating rooms dedicated to some speciality. Each patient needs a uh, surgery operation regarding one speciality. Uh, and so we, um, we divided the problem into two sub-problems, the advanced scheduling that deals with the assignment procedure, so we have to assign each patient to a room, for example like this, uh, maybe we can assign all of them, so my friend, so patient five can make it, like this, okay, and then the second uh, Problem: the allocation scheduling that is divided that is divided into the sequencing procedure. So you order in which the um, operation uh, to be made. For example, this one, and then the timing procedure. So uh, we set the starting time of the operation. So this is a possible solution to our problem. Um, we deal with uh, five different kinds of objectives, five different kinds of objectives. Cancellations, this is the penalty associated to postponed surgeries, and direct waiting time that we also call uh, scheduling costs. Direct waiting time, and then to facility center the costs over time, so uh, costs that deals with uh, hospital over time and either side. Uh, why this uh, why this one? Because uh, it has been shown a strong trade-off between these objectives. So um, we also deal with uh, three different types of uh, uncertainty: the surgery duration, so uh, the real operating time differs from the estimated operating time. And we will see how we dealt with it. The emergency surgery, so we suppose that uh, there are some uh, non-programmed uh, surgeries that have to be uh, made, that have to be performed uh, uh, the day. So we have the uncertainty of the duration uh, and also the, on the arrival time of the emergency surgery. And then no show. We suppose that with a certain probability, uh, some patient may not show up. <clears throat> so a list of papers that deals with at least two of the three procedures and uncertainty. We can add our work that deals with all of them, with the uncertainty I've mentioned, and with the uh, five objectives. Um, so quickly about the mathematical models. We have the, the assumptions, so the emergency, so arrival time, duration time, and um, a proxy. See. We have an assumption about surgery duration, so we fitted a, a mixture of uh, normal distribution, and we'll see later uh, the data and the distribution about, about that. We also divided the patients into three kinds, so children, infectious, and none of the above. Uh, they are totally exclusive. And we have a proxy for the Children and infectious patients, so 
the most one the block, always uh, scheduled at the beginning of the children and the end of uh, the actual patient. We have uh, a proxy for uh, cancellation over time. And we also assume that uh, operating rooms are bottlenecks, so uh, other resources are always available. Uh, if you need to assure about these assumptions uh, that made the, that made these uh, assumptions. So uh, the approach uh, we start uh, we said with a master surgery schedule and an elective routine list. We pass on to the advanced scheduling. So that's it looks the integer linear problem. Uh, you will see implications, maximum, uh, all the constraints have been linearized. I, I didn't have enough space on the slide to show you. Uh, but it's all linear. In this step, we set a robustness level that deals with uh, cancellation cost and overtime cost. We try to balance cancellation cost and winning cost, uh, that is to link uh, this step to the allocation scheduling problem. And uh, we try to minimize the scheduling cost. Second step, so up to stay just casting the integer program, the allocation scheduling, which are to minimize the expected idle time, overtime, cancellations, and waiting costs. At the end, we have the realization. So, uh, I'll be pretty quick on the, on the models. So, the first model of the scheduling, they are to minimize, as I said, the scheduling cost. Under a few constraints, the uh, patient can be scheduled only once. This is a capacity constraint. This is the uh, robustness level we set, a probabilistic constraint. And then the children constraint, one per uh, block, one per special per block, and the main constraint. Uh, this is the first model, and then this, uh, the second one we propose uh, with, deals with the um, shuffling of the patients to balance the cancellation with cost. So uh, we introduce a term that uh, <coughs> uh, would be useful to make a um, hierarchical uh, objective function, and a term that uh, allows us to compare to, to quantities that is a cancellation and working time material and cost. The one that is this one, so first part same as before, then we have the hierarchical constant. Uh, beta and nu, uh, beta and nu, uh, two values between 0 and 1, and then there's gamma cancel, the, the second constant, and then gamma cancel gamma weight, same constraint as before, and the definition of gamma cancel gamma weight, that is the maximum of, of the sum, the maximum over the operating room, so of the sum of the patients uh, uh, in that operating room, and this one, uh, of the conservation cost, same for the so if we minimize the maximum <coughs> of the sum, we are balancing. There won't be uh, an operating room with the uh, with the patient with the highest cancellation cost. Because if you cancel uh, one patient that one, you will pay a lot. But if you are, if they are shuffled, you can cancel the, the one with the uh, modest cost. This is the, the idea of this, of this proxy. Uh, the allocation scheduling. Uh, I'm not sure um, I can answer questions about this. Uh, Lorenzo want to say it, I want to work on it. So, okay. um, so <clears throat> we try to minimize with respect to uh, the order and the um, starting time. And there are a few uh, expected value that we'll see later. And there are a few constraints. Um, this is basically, uh, basically to say that we can't um, we can operate, we can start uh, a surgery uh, if you think that it will be uh, over time. This is a non overlapping constraint between the surgeries, the policy for the children and the patient, subtural elimination, because it's kind of like a TSP. And the main concern. The second stage, we try to minimize uh, the idle time, overtime, cancellation costs, with costs, 
profit constraint. Uh, this is a starting time policy, completion time policy, maximum completion time, uh, auxiliary variables that deal that with uh, that deals with the uh, emergency, uh, the emergency policy, the idle time between the emergency and the previous surgery, the cancellation policy, and uh, shows cannot be cancelled, and the evaluation of the waiting time and the time of the and uh, oh, uh, the So the methodology, classical sample approximation, pairs and samples, you draw them and you optimize on them. Another classical uh, sample approximation n, so you draw some sample, you divide them into folds, optimize on the first one, and test on the other, optimize on the second one, test on the other, blah blah blah. And uh, you choose the best feasible solution, best in the sense of the best. Uh, these are computationally challenging, so we um, uh, we make uh, two mean heuristics for uh, to solve this problem. For the allocation scheduling, the sample uh, sample construct and improve. We start from the patient's data. We do a short uh, sample average approximation, so we don't do all the faults. Uh, if we find a feasible solution, good. If we do not, uh, we apply a robust first speed algorithm and that always uh, gives us a feasible solution. So here. We try to unbalance the room to free up some space by moving the patients. If, we, if no patient is moved, we then pass to the LS shuffle that balances the cancellation cost and waiting costs. If we do move some patients, we try to we free up some space. So we try to reschedule other patients. If we if uh, new patients are scheduled, we pass to the shuffle. If no new patients are, are scheduled, we now have uh, an unbalanced solution. So we go back. Uh, we retry the feasible solution we found before that is certainly uh, more balanced than this one here, and we go to the LS shuffle. This gives us our final solution. For the allocation scheduling, uh, we use um, a bias-serving key genetic algorithm that has been found in the literature, um, but we modify it. So uh, you have the expected operation time, you encode it in a chromosome, this, and then the, uh, the genetic algorithm gives you the, or the sequence. Uh, we have with, uh, these genes, that give, uh, that give us also the time by setting some uh, slot spaces between the operation. For example, like this. This is the reference for the original uh, algorithm. So, some computational analysis. We took the data from this uh, Norwegian hospital. This is the surgical master schedule. This is the speciality and mean standard deviation liberation time and the passion distribution. Uh, we also assume two emergencies per day with a distribution uh, like this. We, we use that the data from this one. From this one so. Uh, so we fit a uh, um, mixture of the normal because we suppose that uh, each speciality has a different procedure and each procedure is uh, ever, uh, as a uh, log normal distribution. So this is the fifth thing. Uh, we try to uh, minimize the, the error in the mean and the standard deviation. And then uh, we divide the patient into inpatient, outpatient. And uh, this patient with different characteristics. Uh, so inpatient need to stay one, one night to the hospital after the operation, outpatient as well. And uh, they are distributed like this. Uh, so generally, uh, inpatient uh, are patients that have a higher coefficient of variation. This one, the sample is from these two values. While uh, outpatient generally have a lower coefficient of variation. We fitted the notion rate, a scheduling cost, cancellation cost, and waiting cost according to the literature. And we also fit the facility center cost, so the idle time and time. Um, did some experiments. Uh, we can see that uh, our solution with the, uh, with the mean heuristic 
is uh, quite close to the sample average approximation, uh, while it always gives us a feasible solution. The sample average approximation do not, does not. Uh, instead, the bias random key genetic algorithm with a challenging uh, uh, with a challenging dimension always find a better solution of the sample average approximation uh, solution. We also do a um, study about the parameters, so the robustness level and the value beta and nu about the balancing of equations. And we found that uh, the optimal solution is not always found in is not always found in uh, one uh, configuration. For example, this one, this one, this one, this one. We also try to um, answer some state-of-the-art questions. So. Uh, we found out that uh, inpatient and outpatient are uh, generally mixed inside the operating rooms, so there are not inpatient rooms and outpatient rooms. We have seen that uh, inpatient are generally scheduled uh, before outpatient because of the uh, higher cancellation cost. Nevertheless, um, they share uh, basically the same expected direct time. Uh, this is a comparison between uh, our solution and uh, the kind of solution uh, to use the longest processing time. And you can see that the slots uh, deal better with, uh, with stochasticity. For example, in this case, uh, we, are, we have to cancel the patient 1 to 7 while we see the more uh, So, this is the article for the long processing time. This is a video presentation. The Eleanor did so someone can click on it. Uh, second copy. Yeah. What I have to do, I have to click on the video. Yeah. Or on the slide. On the slide. On the slide. Yeah. Here. Please. Okay. Yeah. Open. Open. First of all, the user can select the file containing the waiting list the robustness one wants to obtain from the schedule, and the balance between waiting time and cancellation costs. This first phase generates a feasible solution for the advanced scheduling model. Then, the user can select an OR and see the patients that have been scheduling there. If one is happy with the resulting scheduling, the allocation model for that room can be started. The location UI allows the user to select an overtime cost, a needle time cost, and a time limit for the genetic algorithm. This procedure generates two CSV files. The first one contains basic statistics on the scheduling. The second one gives a starting time for each patient and additional indicators such as the expected waiting time and probability of cancellation. So, the user interface was uh, uh, No? Close the video? No, it's not looking like you want to close it. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Uh, can you go up uh, back and down? Oh, perfect. Okay, so we almost made it. Conclusions. Um, final remarks. So, so, you have seen a comprehensive approach about different types of patient and the rest of the time the limitation of the single approximation method, and also general insights about robustness and the real solution, and that. Uh, what can be done? What are we doing? Um, integrating the sample construction improver and by its random key genetic algorithm. So uh, you solve the sheet, you give it to the bias random key, you see the solution, and you do uh, some moves according to the, to the final solution. At this next step, uh, we thought about uh, doing some online optimization. You see, and then uh, uh, you can uh, you can study, for example, the impact of the last the seasons over time. That's it. Thank you, everyone. Is there any question as to the slide? Anyone?
So I think. No, uh, yeah. oh, 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 just a curiosity. Yeah. Because at some point you mentioned that the, the distribution of the, um, the I think it was the time of operation. Yes. Was the <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I wanted to know any intuition why this particular distribution. Okay, uh, it's very used in the literature. Okay. Um, you find that the uh, normal fit well the distribution of the of the operation because uh, um, the surgeon can predict uh, really well the uh, the mean time of the operation, and then uh, you usually have um, a fat tail because uh, it's uh, more probable that. Uh, 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 surgery will take longer. Than stuff. It's a um, uh, it's a choice that's been done. Yeah, there's also a paper from his advisor, and yeah. from his advisor, about why the love normal is usually basically everywhere with the sky. Okay. Yeah. So any other question? I think it's up. So I have one myself. Yeah. Uh, the uh, every patient that you consider, right? They don't have different values. The only thing that I, it comes to me is like uh, there is one that is like an emergence, so it's like you have to operate him, and mm -hmm. the other one can wait. But there are no different level of uh, emergencies for other people. Have you tried to consider like the problem where the, every patient has a different uh, level of emergency rather than the zero and one, basically, as it is now? If I got it right. Okay. Um, the level of the emergency uh, is taken into account with the. Yeah, I mean, it's like the patient has different values. Or yeah, the um, scheduling cost is oh. basically a non scheduling cost that deals with that. Okay, what? Uh, so I think. Uh, no. The entire quitting time. So the day spent waiting for the surgery is good. Oh, it's counted here, like... Uh, yeah. There. If you say, if you have a, a high scheduling cost, that is mm -hmm. a non-scheduling cost, really, um, you are, if you minimize that, uh, you try to uh, operate in that uh, window of time, yeah. uh, for example, a week, the patient with a higher uh, scheduling cost. What that is not be related. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that does make sense. Thank you very much. Thank you. So let's thank you.